Okay, now we reach to that particular module which is a very important part of Azure Data Engineering and that is Azure Synapse Analytics. I'm sure this is one of the most popular services of Azure so that's why you have surely heard about Azure Synapse Analytics word. But if you don't know what is this then in this particular video I'm going to explain couple of things about that. First of all, let me tell you one thing, Azure Synapse Analytics is one of the service which is actually a full-fledged package of couple of features and services included inside that. It's not a one single thing, it is a package of multiple things. Like if you have heard about something called Azure Synapse SQL, then that is actually nothing but a data warehousing configuration. It's a data warehouse with a data virtualization kind of configuration inside that and that is giving you a full-fledged SQL Server data warehouse. If you heard about Apache Spark integration with Synapse, then that is something which is known as Azure Synapse Spark clusters and uh, Azure Synapse Spark. Now when you go with this kind of thing, this is giving you a full-fledged Spark cluster configuration with Spark notebooks which you can run and you can do data engineering with that. You also have a serverless and dedicated variations of Synapse SQL. You can use your choice of languages like you can execute SQL queries in Synapse or you can also use Python, .NET, Java, Scala or even command line interface with that. This is actually one particular utility which is allowing you to do data integration, data analytics, data visualization, data virtualization, all these things are added at one particular place. Not only that, this platform is allowing you to manage your data, secure your data, monitor your data pipelines and you can also create meta stores associated with this. This is one complete package which is actually solving your end-to-end -end data analytics problems. On top of your Azure Data Lake Storage which we have already seen Data Lake Storage Gen 2, they have created Azure Synapse Analytics and that is one basic requirement of Synapse Analytics that every time when you're dealing with Synapse Analytics you need to have a ADLS Gen 2. You, have to, you need to have Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 associated with that. Combinedly, this Azure Synapse Analytics is actually made of five things. There are five different products which are coming with this. If you're not familiar with this kind of product's name, just compare it with your Microsoft Office. Like when someone asks me what is Microsoft Office Maruti, I always say it is actually a combination of Microsoft Word, then Excel, then PowerPoint, then maybe a couple of other tools which are there. Now this kind of package which is creating four or five products is going to be one thing, that is Microsoft Office. And same way here also, Azure Synapse Analytics is actually having five things inside that. We have something which is known as Synapse SQL, which is nothing but exactly similar to data warehousing. This is actually data warehousing associated with SQL Server Database, which allows you to store and query data in a structured way. Then we have Synapse Pipelines, which are exactly same like your Azure Data Factory. Yes, of course, it's 95% same. There are 5% changes which I will show you when we use Synapse Pipelines. But Synapse Pipelines is 95% is same like Azure Data Factory. Whatever ETL transformation you have done in Azure Data Factory, you can do it here. Then we have something which is Azure Synapse Link, which gives you a hybrid transactional analytical processing, which is formerly known as HTAP. I'm sure if you're a data engineer, you have heard about OLAP and uh, if you heard about OLAP, we'll see uh, something newer than that with the help of Synapse Link, which is known as HTAP. Um, we have fourth one, which is Synapse Studio. The Synapse Studio is very much similar to your Azure Data Factory Studio. But yes, this is having so many features associated with this. So if you want to deal with Synapse SQL or Synapse Pipeline or Synapse Link, you have to go to Synapse Studio first, where you have a fully developed integrated IDE available in that. And that is actually going to give you all those tools which you can use and configure. Last but not the least, we have something which is known as Synapse Spark, which is exactly similar kind of concept to your Azure Data Bricks, which you have already seen. This is one of the reasons we kept the Synapse Analytics at the somewhere at the end of this particular course actually because before this you already know data factory before this you already know data bricks and that's a perfect timing actually now it's a time for you to understand synapse analytics so that you can not only understand synapse analytics you can also compare this with whatever you have already learned this is going to be a one of the tough questions for you guys which one you have to use at what kind of requirement and that's why this is a very important concept to understand this five products, when you understand, you will have a basic knowledge of Azure Synapse Analytics and that is a time you have to explore more with that. We will see each one of the tool of Synapse Analytics one by one. 
But right now, it's the time to create our first Synapse Analytics. So we'll go to Azure portal and we'll create one Azure Synapse Analytics with one ADLS Gen 2. Let's do that. Okay, now you can see I'm there in my Azure portal. I have already clicked on create resource and then inside this create resource page, if I click on analytics, exactly somewhere below the data bricks and all, we have something which is Azure Synapse Analytics. I want to click on this Azure Synapse Analytics and then uh, we are going to create our first Synapse Analytics now. Uh, I'll select my subscription. I select my resource group, which is training RG. There is one resource group which is extra required with Synapse, which is actually for the managed resources. So I'm just giving a name of the resource group, Managed RG. Managed RG is going to be a new resource group, which is going to be empty right now. It's not going to have any resources inside that, it's going to be empty. But yeah, if you want to add on some resources here to manage by Synapse, then you can add it there. Name of the workspace, I'm giving Maruti Synapse WS for workspace with some number like 788, which is fine. The location for the Synapse, I'm going to select East US and then uh, they are asking me that you need to have one Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account associated with that. I have my ADLS Gen 2 which I have already used in my other videos of this particular course. So I'm going to select the same one and then inside that they are saying that we need to have one file system container. This is going to be the default container of the Synapse Analytics workspace. I'm going to create a new container for this and I'm giving this is Maruti FS container. FS container is my file system container and why I'm creating new container because for this particular container now they are going to associate some kind of a roles and permissions to, to my particular Synapse Analytics actually. So a contributor role will be associated with this workspace in this container so that we can manage everything inside that. All these configurational things that we can do manually also. If you want to manually do this thing, then you can uncheck this, but I'm going to take it automatically right now. So we are going to assign this kind of roles. We are fine with that. And then I'm going to click on next. Every Synapse workspace is going to come with one default SQL server, which is going to be serverless. And for that SQL server, actually, you have to provide a SQL server admin username and password. I am providing a SQL admin username and password. This is going to be useful for my dedicated and serverless SQL pool both. But as of now, we'll not have any dedicated SQL pool. We will have just a serverless SQL pool at the end of the deployment. So that is fine. I'm providing some username and password. Remember, I can also use Azure Active Directory for authentication, but that's okay. Right now I'm using SQL administrations. So that's fine. I'm going to click on next, next, next. I do not want to change anything. I think we will go with the default deployments of whatever is there in Synapse workspace. And this deployment will take some time. And then once this process is done, it's going to, it's going to give me one Synapse workspace. And uh, inside that Synapse workspace, as I told you, by default, you will have one serverless SQL pool. So th they are showing me that the cost of the Synapse is right now only 360 rupees, which is there, which, which is actually a cost of the serverless SQL pool. Other things in Synapse, when you create, then it's going to charge you. Otherwise, it's not going to charge you right now. So no dedicated SQL pool, no Spark clusters, no notebooks, nothing will be there. It's going to be empty. Only one serverless SQL pool will be there. What is the use of that serverless SQL pool? Well, that also you will get to know in the coming videos. But as of now, we are fine with this. The deployment is in progress. Very soon this will be done. And then what I'm going to do inside that, that is something which I'm going to show you in my next video. Hey guys, sorry for interruption. My name is Maruti and I'm here to make a very important announcement. I hope you are liking our videos and you're doing a continuous learning with us on an Azure cloud and AI related topics. If you are enjoying this thing, I'm going to announce skilltech.club, which is our upcoming website, which is going to be launched very soon. We are here to tell you one thing that everyone who is a subscriber of this particular channel will get Azure cloud and Azure AI related certification courses free of cost in skilltech.club. So you will be a part of the skilltech.club kind of a membership automatically free of cost. And everyone who's a subscriber of this particular channel will get those benefits which are available in that. So what are you waiting for? I request you to please subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends and families if they are also interested in Azure Cloud and AI learning. That's it from my side. Now you can carry on with your learning. Thank you. Okay, in our previous video, we have deployed one Azure Synapse Analytics. And now you can see it's showing me on screen that it's deployed. 
Let me click on go to resource group and it's going to show me that it has actually created one Synapse Analytics which is connected with my Gen2 storage account. So this is what which is there. I'm going into my Synapse workspace. This is showing me, okay, I made a mistake actually. Uh, in spite of P, I type O, sorry for that. But that's okay, my typing is not very good. Uh, I can just see one thing that this is Synapse workspace which is successfully deployed. And somewhere inside this, same like Azure Data Factory, we have a button here which is showing me that I can open Synapse Studio. When I click on this Open Synapse Studio, it's going to open this thing in the new tab. And this is actually very similar to Azure Data Factory Studio, but this is something which is a very enhanced version of that because it's not only having a pipeline related thing, it's actually having something for data warehousing, something for data engineering of my notebook, something which is associated with Power BI. So, so many things are there here. Um, you can see uh, the workspace is open. This is my Synapse Studio. Left side, I have Home, Data, Develop, Integrate, Monitor, and Manage. More options are there. If I go to Integrate, this is a section where you will find everything similar to your data factory because here you can create pipeline, link connections, and all those things. I can click on Pipeline. I can get almost similar kind of controls here. So you can see, except this first one, which is Synapse, my copy data activity, my data explorer functions, Everything is same actually. I just have one separate new section here which is actually for Synapse and this is allowing me to integrate Synapse notebooks with my pipelines. If I go to this section which is data, the data is going to show me that, uh, let me close the pipeline, the data is going to show me that we have workspace and linked sources associated with this. The workspace is not having any database right now so it's not showing many database but if I go to linked one, this is going to show me that yes you have one linked data source which is connected with this which is Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. This is the one which we have connected while creating the Synapse workspace. If I expand this, my Synapse workspace is also coming here. If I expand the Synapse workspace name, then it's showing me that you have FS container, you have your big data container, two containers are there. And this is your primary container in which you have all the writes actually. So suppose if I have some files inside this, I can deal with those files, I can write some queries with those files also, that's perfectly doable. If I go to this uh, left side section which is actually develop, the develop part is actually helping me to create my kind of SQL scripts and my kind of notebooks which can be based on Python or C Sharp or Java kind of things. I can click on this plus icon and you can see that it's showing me I can create a new SQL script, I can generate a new KQL script. KQ is, is stand for Custo Query Language, like this is Structured Query Language. And then we have uh, notebooks, we have data flows, you can create all those things. You can create SQL script and then you can write some script here. The moment you execute script, you can select which database you want to associate. And then um, as of now, I do not have any dedicated SQL pool here. So it's just showing me that, okay, you do not have any dedicated SQL pool, but you have one serverless SQL pool, which is built-in serverless pool, which is already given with this Synapse workspace actually. So that's why this is visible here. I can execute some queries here, and then I can associate with the master database of my built-in serverless pool actually. So that is what which is, which is coming here by default. Now, if you ask me, where is this serverless SQL pool created? Well, that is something which is visible in your Azure portal. In this Azure portal, you can see we have a section called SQL pools. And then I have some built-in pool, which is a serverless one right now. So that is something which is there. If I want to create a dedicated SQL pool, there is a button here by which I can create a new dedicated SQL pool. Or if I want to create an Apache Spark pool to run my notebooks, I can do that also. All those features are coming under one umbrella. And that is something which is known as Azure Synapse Studio. We have a similar kind of monitoring and manage sections also here. Now, if I go to monitor, this is going to show me all the pipeline executions or some Spark pool executions also with that. I can also click on manage, which has some more configuration features here associated with security, associated with DevOps, associated with Spark pools and SQL pools here. So all these configurations we are going to see, we are going to use in this particular video courses. So step by step in each and every video when I'm going to use Synapse, I am going to use Synapse Studio and I will configure a couple of things with this step by step. As of now, this is it. I think, I hope you understood what is your Synapse Studio is all about and this is what it is. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.